Hi guys, this is Grandma Cheap Cheap and welcome back to my vintage kitchen. In this episode, I am going to introduce Kitchen Story Time. And this is in honor of President's Day. This is President's Day weekend and I just want to share a, um, a recipe and a story about President's Day. Well, back when I was young in the olden days very very long time ago president there was no president's day there was a Lincoln's birthday which is February 12th and George Washington's birthday which is February 22nd and we would get both of those days off from school even though February is a short month, and Valentine's Day is wrapped up in it, too. Well, first of all, Valentine's Day was fun uh, when I was a child, and this was long ago in a different land. And I don't know if children do it now, but I, we would exchange Valentine's card. And you cho choose your Valentine's. Uh, pack of cards and give each one of the children in the um, classroom a valentine and there was always one for teacher and um, that was pretty fun and chocolate has been the uh, food of love since probably the beginning beginning of time but anyway um, I digress back to President's Day. In addition to Valentine's Day, then we celebrated the two presidents. Now, legend tells that um, Abe Lincoln, our 16th President of the United States, um, was known for his virtue and they call him Honest Abe. Well, there's even more of a legend about George Washington. George's dad gave him a hatchet or an axe. You younger people probably don't even know what that is. One teaspoon. Uh, a hatchet. They said a hatchet. You might know it by the axe. And George uh, had it for his birthday. And being a, a child, curious, George went out and chopped down his father's cherry tree. So when the father discovered the cherry tree had been tampered with, he, um, he asked George, did he do it? And George fessed up to the crime and said, I cannot tell a lie. Now, this is a budding politician now. Um, if, if only other people had that virtue. George said, I cannot tell a lie. I did, Dad. And that is the legend of, that's what, George Washington's legend is on his birthday. So, I had pictures of the presidents. Give me a moment. I'll be right back. We were at the beginning of February in our little classroom. We would trace the silhouette of George Washington and I hope you can see that and Abe Lincoln and cut them out and they would be all around the classroom you would see the silhouettes of these two presidents along with usually two little cherries on a stem and it was simple times. It was just simply simple times. So, um, 
I say that to say what? In this story time, I'm going to make a simple, and it's not at all homemade other than me putting it together, cherry pie. I'm using a vintage Pyrex pan. Let me heat my oven to 350, preheat that. And this is enough for me and Mr. Um, cherry pie isn't my favorite, but they are good for, cherries are good for gout. Uh, we do eat pretty richly around here and sometimes have a tendency for gout. These tart Montgomery cherries come from Costco and these are really good. We put them in salads or grab a handful and just keep on keeping on. Now what I'm going to do is take a little butter and my um, pastry brush and just uh, butter this small pan. Our the pie crust that you make using um, liquid shortening. Just vegetable oil or mazola. This was in the freezer. But I think, yes. It's thawed out greatly. Um, this is a 9 inch pie crust. And this is probably about a four inch pan. Let me bring you closer. Now I put the um, the pie crust in my little vessel here. And I'm going to take a fork and just make some... Um, pricks all around the pie crust on the side and bottom. And that's to vent it. But I'm also going to use a pie bird. Now, I bought this years ago, never used it. Um, I'm going to use it now simply because I'm going through the pantry and purging stuff. Okay. My filling was too... Um, cans, and I don't think I need it all, of Duncan Hines light cherry pie filling. And I put a little sugar, perhaps a third of a cup of raw sugar in there, and the complement to cherry is almond. So almond flavoring you can't use too heavily because it's very very intense so let me fill the shell oh I think I, I need to put the bird in there first now the bird is supposed to bent the crust uh, so I'm going to Put him here, and I will put the filling all around the pie bird. Now, if the bird does as he's supposed to, then um, a stream of steam should be, I think I'm going to put all of this in here. Why not? A steam of, 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 a stream of steam should have him whistling. Oh, almost. When I take it out of the oven. 
Let me see what I can do. Oh, I'm going to be all right here. Just going to fold this over. And I think that looks rustic. And I'm not going to do anything else with her. Now to make your um, crust really pretty. I'll put some milk. And it's just a dot of milk. And sugar on top. My granddaughter, when she was in college, she used to be my pastry chef because she loved pastries. But um, she would make her pastry with using milk. You can also use an egg wash. This is 2%, I guess, 1% or fat free or whatever you have will do. And um, we're trying to use sugar in the raw because it's not as sweet and, and I have it. Uh, I'm making a mess but I digress. Okay, I'm going to put this in the oven, put it on a cookie sheet. I need to put this on the cookie sheet. Put it in the oven at 350 until it heats thoroughly, browns the crust, and the bird sings. I'll see you at that point. See you soon. Okay, here's our cherry pie just out of the oven. I'm trying to see if there's any steam. There was a little puff coming out of the um, pie. The crust is beautiful with that raw sugar and milk mixture. I did put a couple of... Um, potatoes in the oven with it because we're going to have baked potatoes with our dinner and here is the President's Day cherry pie the simple way please rate comment subscribe and share until the next time guys be blessed